Dodging and burning, both of them have sports named after them. There's dodgeball and there's burn ball. I've never played burn ball before, but it doesn't sound nice. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Florida. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AK Nacer. Today we're doing part number three in a three. Yep, that's three. In a three, actually it might be four or five parts. We're just rocking this image out and um, we're doing today dodging and burning. And this is a huge topic. A lot of people ask questions about uh, how do you dodge and burn. And we've got some really cool techniques. I think you guys are going to like them. They're going to make dodging and burning a little easier for you um, as long as you're if you're okay with things like blend if. So um, if you do have any questions, leave them in a comment box below. But before we get started, I want to announce we just opened a store on Florin. We're going to be selling Florin shirts and other kind of, uh, girls have been requesting underwear, which I think is a little bit weird because I'm not sure why girls want to wear uh, Florin underwear, but uh, why not? <laughs> if you guys want it, we'll put it in the store. So check out our store. There's a link above. If you guys have any other ideas or things that you would like to see in the store, uh, be sure to let us know. And I think we're going to be doing some contests soon about designing some Florin shirts. So that's going to be really fun. Look forward to it. Uh, I know you will be because I will be. Let's get into this image. I'm going to show you guys that cool stuff with dodging and burning. So the um let's just go ahead and show you guys remember last episode where we did all that work on the hair um if you guys need to you can see link to it below um i went ahead and finished that i spent a couple more hours and uh, i'll zoom in here so you can see all the amazing work that i've done on this hair i know it's amazing that's that's what it that's why it's amazing because it's just amazing uh, Photoshop is being extremely slow today. That happens when you work with big files. Um, Photoshop just gets really slow on you sometimes. But let's just turn this off and on so you guys can see there's the before and the after with all that work. And basically all that was just done by hand uh, using the same techniques that we did in last class. So pretty cool. It's a total drain of my life away, but it makes the images look better. Let's talk about dodging and burning. Basically dodging and burning um, helps to bring out facial features and it helps to bring out all kinds of things in an image. So um, there is dodging and burning. Dodging makes things a little bit lighter and burning makes things darker. Um, for a long time I forgot which one was which and then someone said, well when you burn things they turn black. So there you know, uh, burning makes things darker. So you can use that technique to basically, uh, like a cheekbone for instance, you could lighten the top of it and darken the bottom of it and kind of bring that out. So um, that's what we're gonna be doing today. Dodging and burning, basically there's a lot of ways you can do it and um, a lot of people make like 50% gray layers and then paint with some white and some black on some soft light layers over the over top of them and I think that's a really good method. Um, to me the 50% gray doesn't even, I don't even use it. I just use separate light layers and separate black layers. So I'm going to show you guys what I do with that. On a new layer we're going to grab our paintbrush and I'm going to choose a white paintbrush. There we go, a white colored paintbrush. And uh, I'm gonna right click and choose a brush that I've created for the dodging and the burning, the dodging and the burning brush. Um, I'll include a link to this below. If you guys wanna download this brush, it's my favorite brush. Uh, basically, or if you just wanna create it yourself, you can go to window down here and to brush. And it's just got some shape dynamics turned on with a minimum diameter of about 40%. And the transfer, the flow jitter is set to pen pressure. So if you guys are curious what's going on with the brush. Uh, I usually leave my flow at like 5 or 10%. Let's bring that to about 5%, 7%. Looks, shift 0, 5. We'll make it 5%. Okay, and now we're going to paint with light and dark. And the main thing you want to do here is follow the areas that actually are light and paint light over those and follow the areas that are dark and paint dark over those and uh, just what you want to bring out. So for instance like a cheekbone here this would be a great area to just paint some light right over top of. Now I am just painting with white here this is just white paint directly on the skin so if it looks weird at this stage um, it, it's kind of supposed to look a little bit weird don't worry too much about it. There we go. But to get it to actually look like we want it to, what we're going to do is change our layer from normal down here to soft light. There we go. And it's just going to lighten up these areas. So the big thing with this, guys, is to make sure you're painting on the actual areas that, act, that are light to begin with. And um, it's going to help out bring out facial features. You want to, especially stuff with like, you know, the eyebrows, the cheeks, uh, here, the lips, things that you want to draw attention to. If someone's got a few uh, fat rolls or something like that, you generally don't want to do this there unless you're, you know, unless that's what you're trying to bring out of the image. Um, if you do want to downplay some features like fat rolls or something like that, um, then you can do the opposite. Instead of painting light on the lights, you paint dark on the lights and then light on the darks and it'll bring them back out the other way. So, Tips for everybody. If you are into doing that sort of thing, then 
enjoy it and I hope you have fun with it. And if you're not, <laughs> you can do this. All right, even stuff like here in the ear. If you guys have uh, seen the work of people like Jill Greenberg, uh, we're actually, let's feature Jill today. Um, her retoucher, her main retoucher right now, um, I think she still works with her, is Amy Dresser. And Amy's just a really amazing retoucher. She's very, very good. And a lot of that work is dodging and burning. So those images, they're lit well, but a lot of what makes them really stand out is the dodging and burning. And this is not something that's like, I don't know, it's not incredibly hard. The, the entire concept of dodging and burning is actually uh, confoundingly simple. And I think it's in the simplicity that kind of annoys people, to be honest, because all it is is making light areas lighter and dark areas darker. But the, whoops, <laughs> don't fill your entire layer with black. That's not good. Um, I think what really gets people is the fact that a lot of what it makes the image is totally up to you. Um, knowing when to stop is really important and knowing how far you can push an image and just knowing where to paint. Um, that's, that's a lot of what makes dodging and burning look good. Um, you see it a lot of the time when it's just kind of overdone or underdone is, you know, it depends on what effect you guys are going for, but you can kind of not really do anything. Um, so the, the effect overall, like the whole technique is not really that advanced. It's just uh, the fact where like, you know, some people are just better at it. It's like painting. You, you grab a brush and you stick it in some paint and you put that on some canvas, right? It's not that complicated, but some people can do it well. And then you got people like me who can't make anything with a paintbrush. So that's the whole thing about dodging and burning, guys. It does take some practice and um, it takes, it just kind of takes paying attention. And that's why I like to use my flow at a really low percentage here. Um, because it, it kind of forces you to take your time with it and you can kind of see what's going on. All right, there we go. So we're about done with our dodge layer and I'll just turn this off and on real quick so you guys can see. There's our soft light layer that's turning off and on. Now, what I'm gonna do with this, um, we talked about earlier make sure, making sure you're painting on white areas. Now, people who are really uh, experienced in this and uh, they really know what they're doing. They've been doing it for a long time. They're really good at painting over exactly the white areas. Um, some people are not that good. And this is what I'm gonna teach you guys now is um, if you guys are just starting out or if you're a little bit sloppy with your pen or something like that, this technique is gonna help isolate those highlights back into the actual highlights of the image. And it's gonna make the dodging and the burning look a lot more natural. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna double click on the soft light layer. So you can see there's the, uh, there's the, whoop. There's the before and the after, turning that on. We're gonna double click on this and Photoshop has this thing built into it. It's called the Splend Diff. And basically it's a way to get this layer to show up where the underlying layer is either darker or lighter. And you can do this by clicking here on the underlying layer. You have to hold down Alter Option and you can hold down Alter Option. You click right here in this dark guy. It's gonna separate those, those two sliders out and click from the left and right. And as you drag, you can see it's gonna to start to disappear away from your shadow areas. Let's just zoom in so you guys can see that. There we go. All the way over here on the left, it's fully visible. And then dragging it over there, it's going to start to disappear from your shadow areas. So this is totally up to you on how much you actually want to drag that over. Let's just hit OK there. But what this is going to do is it's going to keep those highlights out of your shadow areas and it's going to make it look more natural. So let's hit Command Z. Command Z. <laughs> I'm having trouble talking today. I'm so nervous showing dodging and burning. It's not like I've done this before. There we go. So this is just showing you the before and after. You can especially notice on things like eyebrows, right? It's keeping it out of those darker areas. All right, so that's a little bit lighter. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is go a little bit darker. Personally, people choose white and black a lot of the time. When I'm working with skin, I prefer to choose a skin tone. And um, so I'll use my brush tool, hold Alter Option, grab that skin tone. And then we're gonna click here. I'm gonna choose to like bring it down in luminosity, down in brightness a bit, and then down in saturation. So we're still using like a pretty dark orange, basically what is brown, but we're not using black because black desaturates and people don't really have black in their skin. So I don't really like using black personally. All right, and now what we're doing is basically the same thing, but we're gonna be doing the, uh, the darker areas. So this is anywhere you want to look a little bit darker. And under the eyebrows here, I'm just kind of making it, there we go. That's probably a bit too much. She's gonna look anemic in a second. Actually, I don't even know what anemic people look like. She's just gonna look bad, how's that? Um, I'm still trying to basically grab the highlights and the shadows and, uh, and work with these. There we go. Now, a good dodging and burning, guys, that's, it takes a while. Like, 
if you know if I'm doing this for a client or a, a finished image, something that I've spent quite a bit of time on, um, usually I'll dodge and burn for like an hour, an hour and a half, and that's like on a very, very finished image. But um, this is not something that you would get right in like two minutes, and don't expect to because it's not it's not going to turn out in two minutes. So it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, well, yeah, I mean, you can do a quick job at it, but to get it to really shine and to get it to do what you want it to, um, you are just going to have to spend a little bit more time with it. So um, keep that in mind when you start this sort of thing, just block off an hour of your day, go grab some green tea, meditate and say, I'm going to dodge and burn the heck out of this. If you drink green tea and meditate, I actually don't do either of those, but I was just suggest they sound nice, right? Um, there we go. You can dodge and burn. Now the same thing, <laughs> I like the modern Bob Ross of this stuff. Um, you can use your eraser tool if you want to just erase some of this stuff out like this. That was a bit too harsh. All right. So let's check out the burning, making things a bit darker. So you can do the same thing again, double click on this guy. And instead of going from the left to the right, we're going to go from the right to the left. So I'm going to hold on alt or option, click and drag from the right to the left. And this is going to keep it out of my highlight areas. There we go. So highlights and shadows are both taken care of independently. Let's check our time. All right, let's go ahead and group those. I don't think I'd even use this layer at all. Shift click the two of those and group them with Command G. So you can see here the image, it just looks really flat. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it technically, but it does look really flat. And here you can see it looks a lot less flat. Now this, just like any other technique guys, um, we as humans have a tendency to way overdo things. So anytime I'm doing anything like this, I really like to just lower the opacity down because it just keeps you from looking a little bit, it keeps it, the image from looking really weird, basically. All right, so that's a manual dodge and burn. I'm gonna show you guys one more technique, and uh, this is the super lazy man's dodge and burn, but it's okay, it's not a huge deal. Again, we're gonna grab a light color here, and I'm gonna push it towards white. There we go. And now with my brush tool, I'm literally just gonna paint all over top of my person. She's not my person, she's her own person, but She's my person today because I get to edit it and I get to do whatever I want. There we go. Now this is for the light part. This is going to be for the dodging and I'm going to keep it away from here because I don't really want to lighten any of this area. I'd like to draw more attention to her and not so much to the underlying or to the, you know, anything. Basically, you know, we're going to be working on this area and anything down here. I don't need to be lighter because it's going to draw more attention to it. Okay, so basically I just grabbed a light color and I painted all over her and you're gonna be amazed because it's actually gonna look good. I know it doesn't look like it will, but it will. All right, now we're gonna double click on this and basically do the same thing we did earlier, but this is a little bit less refined. So I'm gonna hold down the alter option, grab this underlying layer and drag from the left to the right. And this is taking, because we have light area now and what we're doing now is we're telling this to not be visible where the shadows are in the underlying layer. So we've got lighter areas and we're telling it not to be visible in dark areas. It's just gonna take those lights and it's gonna bump them up a bit. There we go. Let's click and drag this all the way to the right. And we'll just drag this one from the left to the right there too. And you can see here, it starts to just show up in those highlights, which is great. Now I'm gonna change this from normal down here to soft light. And then I'm gonna kind of choose my effect. There we go. So we can see what was basically just a big blanket, like literally I just painted over that. And here it is bumping all the information up in my highlights, which is very cool. And that combined with the other one is gonna create an effect that I like. Now, if you wanna go ahead and go like even further with this, you could do something like, if you wanna duplicate this layer, there we go, and have this be only visible in her face. Let's just make a layer mask, make that layer mask black, and then I'm gonna paint white all over that layer mask, all over her face. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Now we can do the same thing with dark if we want to. We're gonna grab this. I'm gonna grab a nice dark color that's in her skin. Let's just take it down, desaturate a little bit. And this time I'm gonna stay away from her face because I don't really need this to be visible there. Again, we're trying to draw attention to her face. So if you wanna do that, you wanna lighten up the face a little bit more and you wanna darken up basically everything else. All right, there we go. And underneath her chin, if you um, tend to dot burn, <laughs> I always get those two mixed up. If you burn under someone's chin, it tends to make them look like they are, uh, their necks are a little bit longer and it tends to make them look a little bit better. So um, I would definitely do that. All right, let's change this from normal down here to soft light again. Double click on this and tell this to not be visible where the underlying layer is lighter this time. All right, and you can see it did darken it up. 
Now, I'm gonna change my opacity here. It definitely did add some color into my image, which I don't really want. So what we can do is you can just hit Command U and that's gonna bring up your hue saturation for whatever's on this layer and you can just drag the saturation down because soft light does affect color as well as light and dark. All right, there we go. And that's helping out our colors as well. Cool, let's go ahead and shift click all the three of those. So that's dodging and burning guys. Let's just go ahead and zoom in and we can see the color on her face, it doesn't look exactly right. And this is probably gonna happen if you are dodging burning, if you're adding your own colors and things like that, this is probably gonna happen. I'm just gonna fix that real quick because it's, it's bothering me, so it's probably bothering you. Um, let's just put a little bit more red in her face. I'm gonna go to Curve Adjustment Layer, click on the red channel, click on this little hand there, click on her face, and then just use the up arrow a couple times. And um, let's put a little bit of green in her face too. Yeah, I pulled down the green, I don't know. It's always a guessing game with this sort of thing. There we go. You can see it's just kind of like putrid looking face before and uh, getting that back to like a relatively normal looking skin tone. There we go. Cool. So let's show you guys the before and the after. <laughs> this does look like a kind of a sick image, but she looks kind of sick. And part of that is because there's no light in her eyes. We're going to do that in a later episode. I'm going to shift click on where's our dodging and burning. There it is. Shift click on all those layers, group them together, and we can show you guys there's the before and the after with the dodging and burning. And again, just like everything else, I'm going to lower the effect of that. Cool. So that's a quick way. You can see it really didn't take too long. You don't have to be super good with anything, and uh, it'll get those highlights looking better and the shadows looking better, and it'll keep your image from looking so flat. Add that Shazam. Well, guys, if you want to do it, please do. Dodge and burn the heck out of those images. Leave them in a comment box below. I'd love to see them. And if you guys have any other questions, Ask me, because I'm always here. You find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Oh, I talked a lot just then. Join us tomorrow, guys. We're going to be sharpening this image, and I'm going to show you guys some great techniques on how to do that. And then on the next episode, we're going to finish it up, and I'm going to show you all the coolest finishing touches on how to make images awesome. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. I'll flurn you later. Uh, not yet. i got to record a blooper. A pooper blooper. Blooper yeah, sometimes I bloop on purpose. There you go, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes if I don't, yeah, if I'm just absolutely perfect and I don't make any mistakes, I have to bloop on purpose, which could be this right now. Okay.